Greetings friend, I will give you the expert tips and tricks that you need to solve this puzzle by our featured setter, AmberDot. Not only that, stay tuned after the first advanced strategy I show you, I'm going to give you some cool insights about our featured setter. Click below if you want to give it a go, and with that, it's solving time. First thing you want to know, I have solved this puzzle before, is you get these sevens in columns one and three, and a seven in row seven. So that means this has to be a seven there, the only place left in block seven. And then follow these sevens in row seven and nine with this seven. One place left for a seven here in block nine is right here. And then you'll notice there's still two spots for a seven in block six. Uh, so I'll make marks there. That's called Snyder notation. Uh, what Snyder notation means is if any time in a three by three block, you have two possibilities for a candidate, mark them. Uh, that way, if you solve one of these cells, you can immediately solve the other one for that candidate. And it leads us into some advanced strategies. We're going to use Snyder here in just a second to lead, to help us make some solves that you're going to find it really cool here. So stay tuned. Also, let's look now at the uh, sixes. So we got six coming across row one and coming up column one. The only place left for six is right there. And now because that six is right there, first let's follow these two sixes in rows one, three, and column seven to solve for a six right here. And then come down and solve for a six right here. And now you see there's a six coming down column five and across rows nine and seven. The only place left for six is right there. Um, we'll make a couple of marks to the sixes and then I'm going to get to that nice, cool pointing pair that I really wanted to show you here. All right, so we've kind of marked where the six is going to be remaining in the puzzle. Check out how this nine works, right? The nine's cutting across row one. So there's only two places that nine can be up here in block one and they're in column one. What this means is this is a pointing pair. This means nine's have to be somewhere in block one. And so they're limited to column one, which means nines can't be anywhere else along this column. And that's important to us. And the reason why it's important is I'm about to show you. What's really cool, and I love what Amber and I did here, is you, you can actually solve a naked single now, knowing that these are uh, nine has to be up there. Look at this cell right here. What can this cell be? Well, it can't be a one, two, or a three, or a four, or a five, six, or a seven. And now because of this point pair, this can't be a nine either. This has to be an eight. And I love this. So this is a naked single eight, and you really need to find this if you wanna make progress in the puzzle. And remember, we're gonna do some advanced strategies, and I haven't told you yet, but there's three of them, and they play upon each other. You gotta do it in the right order, or you will not be able to solve this puzzle. And the last strategy is the most important, so you need to stay tuned and watch that one. Okay. So now with the eight in rows seven and eight, oh, excuse me, row eight in rows eight and nine, and this eight coming down column four, this has to be an eight. Uh, means two places left for an eight up here in block five. Uh, this is good. This is really helpful to us. Okay, other thing we can notice is that where can a nine be in this column, right? It can't be here or here because of this nine. It can't be here because of this nine. So you actually solve this cell for a nine. Let's circle back to these eights, right? Because now this eight cuts up, cuts up here. The eights are limited to two spots up here in block one. And so this comes from kind of symmetry here. Like the nine cuts across and makes a pointy pair of nines here. Well, now the eights come up column one and make a pointy pair up here in row one for column one. So eights can't be anywhere else along row one. They have to be here in block one. And now you have this eight in row three. This means uh, eights can't be in either of those two spots. So you can actually solve this cell for an eight. And so this eight, column seven, Coming up column nine, only place left for an eight in block six is right there. And now we can actually solve this cell for an eight. And this is pretty cool because we can make some more solving here. And you're going to you're gonna see, uh, I'm actually not even going to be another advanced strategy, but it's a really cool way to solve another cell. And it's going to lead us up to that advanced strategy. See how there's eight and nine in row four, eight and nine in row five. Uh, this eight coming up column one. And remember these point pair eight coming down column one. So that means the eights are limited to only two spots here in block four. And so that is called a hidden pair. There might be other candidates that you can show there, but the eight and nines can only be in those two spots. And that's cool because what you see is I call it displacing the Snyder. A, a six can't be in there anymore because at least has to be an eight and a nine. And so now we can actually make that solve for this six here and this six right there. Pretty cool, huh? You like that one? I thought that was nice the way Amber.weave weave wove that into the puzzle and now we're getting close to where we're going to need that first advanced strategy but we still got to make a couple more marks here and you're probably like hey timberlake i'm doing great i don't think i need you for the advanced strategies 
not the case. You got to pay attention here because you will get stuck if you don't know what to do next. And so just like we saw a naked single down here, you can actually look right here and there's another naked single that we can solve. What can this cell be? Well, it can't be a one or two, three or four, six, seven, eight or nine. This cell has to be a five. I love how Amber.Dot put that right there in the puzzle. So now that has to be a five, which limits the fives to these two cells right here. Another key thing we need to note is what is in this cell? What can this cell be right here? Uh, it can be a one, it can't be a two or three, it can be a four, but it can't be a five, six, seven, eight, or a nine because of these nines. The, the fact that this is only a one, four, that's actually very important for us. Uh, the other thing you want to notice is that the nines are coming down column seven, so the nines are limited to these two spots here in block nine. And since the nines are limited to row seven and eight here, what we know, the nines are also limited to row seven, eight here in block seven. So this creates a situation that we call a claiming pair. So the nine, since there's a nine here in column six, the nines have to be somewhere in row nine. And what we just discovered is it can't be in block seven, it can't be in block nine, so it's gotta be in block eight. And so the only two spots in block eight where nine could be is right there. So that's called a claiming pair because the nines can't be there anymore. Very cool stuff. You do need to know that because we're setting ourselves up for that next advanced strategy. First, you wanna look across here and go, what can be in these cells, all right? Uh, you got three cells remaining, so it's a naked triple of a three, five, nine. Now let's clean that up a little bit, right? This can't be a three because of the three right here. Now this can't be a nine because of these nines right there, right? The nines cannot be in this spot anymore. Uh, and then right here, this can be a three, five, or nine. Something else to note, since this three is cutting across row nine, the two and two places left for a three in block eight are right there. Now it would be nice to be able to solve one of these threes, wouldn't it? Well, we're just about to do that. Now, lead us up to our first advanced strategy. Check it out. Here's how we're going to do it. First, come over here and go, what can be in these cells? It can be a one, three, five, nine, right? Because there's four cells remaining in block nine, one, three, five, and nine. We already have a nine in column seven, so we can get rid of those nines. We have a three right here. We can get rid of that three. And now you're probably looking at this going, Timberlake, uh, don't see what the big deal is and why you're so excited about this. Well, I'm going to show you why. If we can make this a 3-5 along with this 3-5, this will allow us to do another advanced strategy and solve for the 3 in this block. And it has to do with a cool pattern that you notice when you have matching pairs and then only one of those pairs is in the other block. Hopefully you, you might see what I'm talking about here. But in order to do that, we gotta be able to remove the one from here. So can we remove a one from this cell right here? And the answer is yes. And it's gonna be our first advanced strategy. It is an X wing. Okay, let me show you. You wanna focus here on column two, right? Column two has three cells remaining, one, eight, or nine. This can't be an eight and this can't be a nine but the ones are limited to two spots in column two. Now let's come over here to column nine. And I'm not gonna fill out all of column nine, but where can a one be? It can be here. Can't be any of these three cells because of this one, and it can be here. So it's the same two rows in columns two and nine contain a one. So this forms our X wing. And an X-wing means that one has to be here or here, here or here. And so these are our base sets, which are the limitations of the ones, the two spots. And these are our cover sets, which means we can eliminate every other one across row one and across row seven. It means we can eliminate a one from right there. And the reason being, you might be able to see, if you put a one right here, then you'd eliminate a one from these two spots, and then you'd go up here to row one and go, oh, wait, I need a one in columns two and eight, but the only place to do that is row one. That would break the puzzle. So now we have our three, five matching pairs. And maybe you're going Timberlake, okay, great. I don't understand what's so exciting about that. I'm about to show you. Before I do that, I do want to give you, like I promised, a little bit of insight about our feature setter. 
What Amber Dot told me is that she's been solving classic Sudoku puzzles since she's been eight years old and uh, have a lot of books, runs through, does a lot of solving, got hooked on Sudoku like I did through watching Cracking the Cryptic, eventually started working on setting puzzles, and now she has made over 400 puzzles. Most of them have not been released. She's still working on them to perfect them to release them. This reminds me, I've solved some previous Amber Dot puzzles. So I'm going to put a link to one that uses some expert tips and tricks you've probably not seen before. So you want to stay tuned for that. You're going to love it. Now, let's get back to this solve. Like I promised, I'm so excited because I see these two cells right there. And the reason I'm excited about that, let's use a different color. Let's go green here. Is this is the basis for a W wing because of what you see right here. So this is called delta varied double wing. What the deal is, is we look in a three row band, right? So three blocks in a row, and it's a band, uh, three rows. And you'll notice that in one row, in one block, we have a three and a five uh, by value cell, BVC. Another row in another block, we have another three and a five. Now we look in the third row of that band, the third block, and can only one of those can exist? And the answer is yes. There's only gonna be a three can be down here. Five can't be down here in any one of these cells, right? Because we know that's gonna be a one or a four. What that means is we know that a three actually has to be in one of these two cells, at least one three. And the reason being is that if this was a five and that was a five, you'd have a five cut all the way across there, five cut all the way across row eight. Where would you put a five in block? seven you wouldn't put it anywhere right because these two fives would be eliminated so we know one of these has to be a three this is awesome stuff and the only way to get to this was to do that x-wing so i love what amber dot did there by layering those advanced strategies what that means is we can eliminate a three from any cell that sees both this cell and this cell and the green cell which means this can no longer be a three and if that can't be a three the only place left for a three in block eight is right here we can solve that cell for a three. I love it. And so let's move the colors here. And if you're not that familiar with Sudoku W Wings, I got a tutorial, uh, my W Wing tutorial, and I want you to go check that out. I'll put a link to it right here. It's one of my most popular videos on my channel. And subscribe to some more hobbies while you're at it if you want to solve W Wings even better. All right, because of this three, now we can eliminate a three from right here, which creates. Uh, Two spots left for a three, so we'll mark that Snyder notation. We are going to start making some great progress in this puzzle, and I get excited. Now we're getting to this spot. Okay, you can't turn away now because I promise there's three advanced strategies. I've only covered two, that X-Wing and that W-Wing. To get to the third advanced strategy, and it's different, and you're going to love it, we got to set up this puzzle a little bit more, do a little bit more solving. So let's look up here. What can be in these two cells? It looks like it can be a three or four because the rest of the cells are filled in up here. I got a three in row three already, so that's got to be a four, and that's got to be a three. Okay, now we're ready to set up that advanced strategy. And think about here in block seven. You see a lot of BVCs, right? If we could eliminate one of these, wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that help us break through this puzzle and do a little bit more solving? And the answer is we can do that. And what we want to do is we actually want to focus on the can at four. If we can eliminate maybe the four from here, we'd be able to solve this puzzle. Is there a strategy that allows us to do this? Yes, there is. Look right here. What, and I'll mark this in orange. Look at the can at four, right? Where can a four be in column three? Well, it can't be there because of this four. It'd be here or here. Can't be here because of this four. Now, let's look over here. We just saw a four here in rows three and two. So four can't be in those two spots. A four can be here. And a four could be down there. All right. Do you guys see what strategy this is? And we'll do some purple action. This is a skyscraper. Okay, great. I love this. Amber dot, you, the third advanced strategy, skyscraper. This is what I use. You might find something different, but this is what I found. I, I thought this solve path was just fascinating and, and amazing. I loved it. So skyscraper, we have... I can it limited to two cells and two different uh, columns, houses. And they share a common row, right? They share row five. And then the tips are in the same band, but in different rows, right? There's that same lower band. 
and they're in different rows. What this means is one of these purple cells has to be a four. The reason being either this cell is a four, right? If it's not a four, this would have to be a four. That can't be a four. And this would have to be a four. So a four has to be either here or here. It could actually be in both the purple. But what we would care about, is since a four has to be in one of these two cells, any cell that sees the two purple cannot contain a four, which means this cell right here cannot contain a four. This is huge. This is that third advanced strategy, that expert tip and trick you need. And I think we're going to see ourselves get to a much smoother solving, a little bit easier than what we've been dealing with here. But this is a great setup. This challenged me, and I love this puzzle. And hopefully you did too. Because now that has to be a one. If that's a one, that's a nine. And I get to like my favorite part of solving is when I get to re solve the cells and remove all those marks that I already made. That's fine. This is going to be your nine right here. Okay, and since this is a one, this is going to be a five. That's going to be your three, and this is going to be your one. Boom, boom, boom. One and one means this has to be one. That's got to be a two. Okay, making great solves. What needs to be right here, right? You're missing two cells. Two and a seven. Got a two right there. So here's two, and here's your seven. Okay, now we can be right there. It looks like a three, four, or five. We'll keep an eye on that. See if we can do better than that. Uh, let's come back to here. I always want to fill out what I call a full house. If you have one can missing, it's a full house. So we're missing the four. We can actually solve that for a four. And now we have created another full house right here. This has to be a five. Now, with this five coming up, column four, this five cutting across, the only place left for a five here in block five is right here. And with these two fives, we can actually solve this for a five. Nice. And we know this is still a three, four. I'm not going to mark that yet because I think we can solve that without having to make the mark there. Okay, so let's keep pushing our way up here. We got a five here, got a five here, five cutting across row two, only place left for five block two is right there. And then you might notice there's a four, seven here, four, seven here. So this actually has to be a four, seven, which would make this be a one or an eight. Well, I got a one right here. So this is your eight and this is your one. And you notice I'm, I'm staying away from solving. I don't have to do this, do the marks there. I'm just trying to help you out here. So this would be now a two nine. So two can't be any of those two spots. We can mark that for a two. Great. And now what's missing along this row? Looks like we need a three and a four. Can't make that mark just yet. Okay, let's come back to here. What are we missing? Looks like a two and a nine. Got a nine right there. So here's your two and there's your nine. This is gonna be a two. Okay, great. Let's come back to here. We're missing a two, four to nine, right? So I got two right there and I got two nine right there. That pattern tells me I can solve all three of these cells because of this two nine there, this has gotta be your four, that's gotta be your nine and that's gonna be your two. And so now we got these two nines, nine, nine with this nine means this has to be a nine right there. And then we're looking and we're missing a one and it looks like a four. Got my four right there. So here's your one and here's your four. And remember there was a three, four there. So four, three here, come back with my working memory and going, yeah, that was a three and that was a four. And then this has to be a three. See how we kind of work through all that? Still missing a one in block five. I saw those two ones. So that has to be your one. This is going to be your seven. I told you it's going to be a four and a seven up here. So that's a four. That's your seven. This has to be a three. That's the only thing I don't see in block two. Come back down here. Eight and a nine missing. I got an eight. So here's your nine. And here's your eight. You need to check out this other puzzle if you want to find more Sudoku tips and tricks. Thank you so much, Amber Dot, for being my featured set this month. I can't wait to showcase more of your puzzles. Join the Smarty Party. Click on the description below for my Buy Me a Coffee page. I got a puzzle going on right now. And thank you so much for watching.